Hey folks, how's it going? This is Iron Seagull here, back with another Sims Info and Thoughts video. The Sim Gurus, I think they're really trying to keep me busy today. <laughs> because today was not just the day that they did the live stream for Eco Lifestyle, but we also got another forum post doing a deep dive on a particular aspect of the upcoming Nifty Knitting Community Stuff Pack. And this time, it's about the previously announced feature, Plopsy, which works as an online store. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So SimGuru Connor says, Welcome back to another Nifty Knitting Deep Dive. This is part 4 of our ongoing series, where we take a peek behind the curtain of yarn <laughs> to discuss in-depth upcoming gameplay features and have a little Q&A with members of the development team. Today, let's talk about Plopsy. Plopsy is an online arts and crafts marketplace to buy and sell goods. It's sort of an amalgamation of real life online stores, but the theme should feel familiar. For a pack centered around knitting, this felt like a really good ad. After all, there are only so many times you can gift your significant other a sweater, and yet so many sweaters to knit. The flow for Plopsy is relatively straightforward. Once you've crafted an object, the list on Plopsy interaction becomes available. Listing an item on Plopsy costs a small fee and will remain listed on Plopsy for several days. You can keep track of your listed items in your inventory where you will see the current duration of the item and if there are any interested buyers. It's that easy! If someone is interested in buying your item, you'll be notified with the message. If you agree to the buyer's offer, you can use the ship on Plopsy action to ship the object in the mail. You'll be paid immediately and get a thank you message from the buyer when they receive your package. Alternatively, you can ignore a buyer's offer and relist the object for sale again. Ship it! Plopsy offers a higher payout than selling things the old fashioned way. At the cost of some general maintenance and patience, the goal is to offer a better selling experience for both the stay at home crafting professional and the fair weather crafting hobbyist. Plopsy isn't tied down to a career or a gig, so anyone is free to try it. Sims can also purchase things on Plopsy through their phones or computers. This storefront will rotate in random crafted items throughout the day, so even non-crafty Sims have a chance at some cool stuff, including the new knitted clothing. Oh yeah, I think that is pretty cool. <laughs> we have an alternate way of getting the knitted clothing without necessarily having to knit, but it isn't necessarily just hand-fed <laughs> hand to you. We plan for Plopsy to be available for things like paintings, woodworking statues, potions, knitted items, flower arrangements, and more. Hoping to wrap future arts and crafts under Plopsy too. I think it would be neat. I've seen some other people talk about this too, that maybe the candles from Eco Lifestyle should be tied into this as well. But without further ado, here's Rick Rogers, engineer extraordinaire, here on our Stuff Pack team here to talk a bit about coding, UI, and all the bits between. Connor asks, can you tell us what it means to be a gameplay engineer on The Sims 4? And Rick replies with, to understand what a GPE is, we always say GPE, you need to understand a bit about how The Sims 4 works. The Sims 4 uses a client-server architecture, which means it is essentially composed of two separate programs that talk to each other. The first program we call the client, and it is responsible for displaying the game to the player. It handles things like graphics, audio, and the user interface. It's relatively important. The second program we call the server, and it manages what we call gameplay systems like autonomy, interactions, relationships, aspirations, skills, and careers. The server keeps track of those systems and condenses them down into operations the client understands, like play this animation on this object, or maybe put this cat on top of this vacuum. As a GPE, my job is to build and fix the gameplay systems on the server and make sure designers have the options they need to create features using them. Disclaimer, I am simplifying a bit. You also work on UI engineering. How is it different from gameplay engineering? How is it the same? 
To me, gameplay engineering is about solving abstract problems like where and how should a sim put down the object they are holding, while UI engineering is usually about solving much more concrete problems like what do we do if the Russian word for tiny home is too long for this button. UI engineering can be really satisfying because the changes we make are usually immediately visible. There is also something fun about changing up the interface of the game that we stare at all day long. At the end of the day though, code is code. I like to work on both because it means I get to implement the gameplay and UI components of a single feature. Is there one thing in Nifty Knitting that you're really excited to be working on? Plopsy, I think partly because the idea of selling things I make at home has always appealed to me in real life. Also, Plopsy breaks some of the assumptions we had previously made about how we would use the crafting system, and it's been fun to find and solve the problems that have come up. What is your favorite feature you have ever worked on in The Sims 4? Can I pick two? Favorite feature to make? I had a lot of fun adding freelance careers to the game. We had done something similar to Freelancer with the acting career in The Sims 4 Get Famous, and we wanted to figure out a way to use some of the things we liked about the acting career to make other careers. When we added another freelancer career for fashion photography in The Sims 4 Moschino stuff pack, I felt like my baby was all grown up. Favorite feature to play? I really enjoyed working on the Murphy bed in The Sims 4 Tiny Living stuff pack. It's convenient design but sometimes prickly exterior make it the perfect combination of sensible and a little nefarious. You might say I identify with it a bit. I didn't hook up the object itself, that was our design team, but I worked on it because we needed gameplay support and code for a bed that was also a love seat. We had never made anything like that before. Thanks Rick, that's all I have for this week, Simmers. But never fear, we have one more design deep dive to share with you. I saved the best and my personal favorite for last, so be sure to join us next time for the Knitting Deep Dive. Until then, Simguru Connor. Oh man, it's, it's, I've enjoyed these deep dives a lot, so it's a little sad that there's only one more of these left, but if it's Connor's personal favorite, so then hopefully it is going to be really cool. Yep, it's going to be focused on knitting. Simguru Connor also made a response to some good questions from Sigzi05. Very cool inside info on the Plopsy feature. Questions, how will price scaling work though, compared to selling them through buy more or the inventory? Will clients ever make offers below the original pricing? Also, is there a time limit to having things on Plopsy? And if we list something there, will we see it when using Plopsy through the phone? And Siguru Khan replies saying the goal is that clients always offer above the original price. What percentage that is can vary. I'd like Plopsy to feel worthwhile, so no joke offers thankfully. Also, the listing time limit is still being tuned, hoping to find a sweet spot that feels good. So I am glad that they're giving us more incentive to use Plopsy rather than just dragging stuff to the cell function in the inventory. That's good. I agree with that decision to not have the prices be lower than the original cell price because if I kept getting that over and over again, I'd be just like, well, <laughs> there's not really much point in doing it this more realistic way anymore if I keep getting less of a benefit from it. And since it does say in the forum post that you can keep track of your listed items in your inventory, it looks like this will also be another nice benefit of us getting that inventory 2.0 update in June where we'll be able to just find items a lot more easily using filters and being able to sell multiple items at once and marking items as favorites and all that good stuff. So yeah, it does also make me more excited for that inventory 2.0. Overall, the more that I hear about Nifty Knitting stuff, the more impressed I am with it. And I think this has a lot of potential to be one of the best stuff facts we've ever had for The Sims 4. And that wraps up another Sims <laughs> Info and Thoughts video, so feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on Nifty Knitting, and be sure to subscribe if you want to keep up with my latest content from The Sims, Paralive, Sonic the Hedgehog, and more. So I will talk to you all later, and have a great day. Thanks for watching!